Hi guys, how are you? Welcome uh, to week six. Uh, basically, we're gonna be learning about matte painting now. Yay! Right. So um, I'm just kind of working uh, as I as I go because I'm kind of excited. Uh, finally, getting to use my uh, Wacom um, mobile studio. Uh, the fact is, it lets me even rent, uh, make a tutorial at 4K, so I'm going to see if I can actually upload it, and uh, upload it and save it as 4K, so you'll be able to even watch this at super high res, right? Um, anyway, so, this, um, I guess I'm going to talk to you guys about the um, last couple of weeks, um, mainly last, last week, I know we missed the gla the class as, as a group and uh, I initially I had a plan to sort of um, you know grade your your stuff uh, in class with all of you guys in present uh, instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark uh, your 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 projects anyways but I'm gonna save the session uh, when we grade this stuff um, and now you're great sorry when we have the sort of uh, critique uh, session um, we're gonna I'm moving it to um, class 10 so class 10 we're gonna be looking at your assignment number two and also your assignment number one right as a group so so don't worry if um, you know we missed it this uh, round because I'm planning to basically uh, redo it again, right? Uh, another thing is that um, I, I'm, I'm grateful the fact that you guys made an effort to submit your projects on time. I know there were some issues, um, a couple of things, perhaps I, I wasn't clear myself, but uh, you know, the fact is that you made it this far says that you guys are actually learning stuff, right? So. Good congratulations to all of you guys, right? So I haven't had time to um, look at the projects just yet, but I am going to see it on uh, Thursday and Friday, right? So I'm going to start to um, go over them. And if I have any questions, I'm just going to shoot you an email and figure out with you uh, how to fix or, you know, any kind of problem. The, the, the advantage is that um, it's a small group. So, because being a small group, it's, it's so much easier to um, to handle a small group, right? Uh, if, if, the, if the the room was full of um, you know maybe twenty five to forty people, that that just would be insane, right? Um, I know because some other some of the classes are actually laid out, laid out that way, and it's very hard to to be specific with some topics because uh, it's sort of, uh, you know, the, the students are sort of mixed match. Some of them know more than others. So it's kind of hard to get into even uh, more complicated uh, things because some we know and understand and some, and some won't, right? So just uh, keep that in mind, right? Um, uh, okay, so let me see. Um, I'm just going to create eyes on this guy so the way you do it is this. you're going to pick the sphere and I'm going to hit the make um, uh, make poly mesh so the sphere is now uh, 3D go back to the tool with the, with the alien face sub tools and then you have to lo layer, layer it right so I'm going to append that mesh so here it is mesh uh, sorry append and go right to my poly model 3d sphere now the sphere is going to come in huge so that means that i'm going to select the layer first so i'm now on the right layer i uh, am going to switch now to the move tool up here and scale this right and bring it forward scale it even more and then I'm going to go right to the front. Right, so same, same thing again. We're going to just kind of start positioning it right on the right 
section, right? So I'm gonna have to bring it out a little bit more. There it is. Now it's not in the uh, socket, too precise, but uh, I'm gonna now go back to the Dynama, uh, Dynama, Dynawax model. There you go, and then switch back to the draw tool. Pick the move tool, and uh, I'm gonna now just move this more properly, right? So, and, then, and I'm just kind of getting fit for the eye, right? So, and actually, it looks 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 good so far. So, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna select the sphere, the sphere, right? I'm going to close the sub tools and go to the geometry. And then I'm going to go right to where it says modify topology. Now this section modify topology has a lot of cool stuff, right? Obviously you get to modify the, the geometry, but uh, I'm just going to show you the first one here. Mirrored and weld, right? So now I have another eyeball right, right there. So now I have a layer that has two uh, spheres. I can go back to the tools and select the head and now I can go ahead and start uh, dealing with that. Now, now I can actually do another thing, I can actually select not a spear but uh, let's say let's pick um, maybe a torus or a, a ring 3D, make it into a poly mesh. Uh, but first, actually that's, that's good enough by me. Um, hold on one second. Sorry about that, I just uh, had to answer a phone call. Anyways, uh, I'm not sure why it stopped working. One second. <laughs> Alright, so let me tell you a quick story. Um, that just happened. I couldn't get it to work after I, I hung up on the phone. And I thought, man, this thing broke on me, and what what's going on, right? But then I realized that I was using the Apple Pen as opposed to the Wacom uh, Pen, right? But now it works. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so I, I'm going to turn this into a, a 3D uh, polygon, and then grab the, the head model again. And now we're going to bring it as an append uh, object, right? So here it is. There's the torus or ring in this case. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to turn off these other two layers for now. And what we want to do is just use, let's see, um, a little bit tricky, but let's if I, if I get it to work um, so I'm gonna zoom in for a minute and zoom out and then delete the, the one side right oops I'll do it again I'm holding control and, and um, So wait to oh I see okay I think I think I got it there we go so I, I just wanted to flip it, flip it around and uh, so I hit I, I hit the geometry holding control and um, and I believe shift right and then I'm gonna go right to where it says uh, geometry look at the modify poly section and then I'm gonna tell it uh, hidden so now that area is gone it's no longer hidden it's just deleted right and I can even cap the areas that are exposed right so um, close holes and there we go right so so now what happens is that when we uh, apply the um, called, um, if we go back to Actually, it is geometry. Go to uh, Dynamesh, turn Dynamesh on, and all suddenly this whole thing becomes even, right? So I, I have to turn on the 
um, head X on a keyboard, I guess, but I don't have a keyboard turned on, so I'm just going to enable it here. There we go. And I just delete or smoothen this out, right? There, right? So now what, I, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn on those layers again. And um, obviously it's here, it's just um, ghost, right? I'm going to turn the transparent on so we can see the model. And uh, once you have the model uh, ghosted, then you can go ahead and move this into position, right? And scale it as well. Actually, it doesn't matter which one I have, I, I can do it just from here. Right, so that's going to be the, the gums to the lower teeth. Right, so I'm just uh, placing it now, um, also shaping it. We can even uh, zoom in and frame it and start creating the modeling process right i know i know i'm getting a little bit carried away here showing you guys some stuff but um yeah you know whatever you pick up pick from this you can apply it to uh winrix class as well uh, so i figure um i'm gonna use uh one of the brushes to thin this out so i'm gonna go back to draw pick a brush or from here it doesn't matter uh, i think i'm gonna use um Let's see, uh, inflate, but we'll do it as a sub. This way it, 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 it eats it out as opposed to inflating it. And I'm gonna just uh, decrease the size of the brush and start to sort of uh, make it into gums, right? Right, so now you see all this, all this stuff here is getting kind of Restored it right there. Uh, all I'm going to do is hold shift and soften that out, right? There we go. So I'm going to do quickly, I'm going to just whip out teeth. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and um, I can do many ways, right? I can actually use a move tool and uh, make the brush small. pull out teeth or there's another another way that's very effective and you can nail the teeth right away I'm gonna undo I'm gonna turn this off for a minute and just work with this right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and basically hold the, this key the, the control key and we're going to make uh, selections. Okay. Actually, let's undo that and just move this a little more this way. I just want to make, I don't want to give it a gap, right? So now, oops, now we're going to just flip this around, zoom out. Funny how it's doing that. So zoom, zoom in. Actually, I'm gonna do this. Maybe now it zooms out on this object. Right, and then grab the move tool quickly. We're gonna go ahead and use. If it works. <laughs> this is a, oh no, this is not the move tool. This is a move tool, right? There we go. Right. So, so we have a row of teeth, and obviously it looks kind of uh, polygonal because obviously it's it needs to be retopologized, right? So, retopologize, but now we're going to lose some of the uh, areas that are close. That's okay, because we can then 
take the damp standard brush and we can start to carve out the Oh, it's acting so weird. Okay. Right. So I'm gonna leave it like that for now and uh, turn back everything else. Turn on the ghost or turn off the ghost. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select um, this layer, the the face. And now we're gonna do it real quick. We're going to go ahead and um, draw the eyes, right? Now, I'm going to use the Sculptors uh, Pro, right? so it adds more geometry around the eyes. Right? So I'm going to move a little bit quicker. Right? And then, of course, shape this area as well. And a little bit bigger. And then, um, shape this out as well. So we want to sort of uh, exaggerate the jaw also and give it lips because right now it doesn't have any lips. Right, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and um, And then the damn standard brush again. I use a lazy mouse just because it makes it a little bit nice strokes, right? Same thing with like this. Right, so. So we're now sort of defining some uh, some minor details, right? Uh, the whole point of this is for me to take um, a simple simple sphere and shape it into sort of like an alien-like um, form. I'm doing with the move tool. I'm going to uh, sort of emphasize this draw. Same thing here, right? Uh, same thing with this. Right, or maybe less. Turn on the perspective. Right, maybe changing the, the materials. Man, I'm not good. Uh, we'll probably stick with this for now. It sort of looks like wet. Or, we'll check this out, right? Yeah, this looks, it looks not bad, right? So, so it looks kind of um, polygonal. Um, that's because, of course, it's all, it's all messy, so I'm going to smooth it out a bit. Right. And also ho hold the shift key and bring the strength of the smooth down a bit, so it's not a hundred. Right, so... So now I can grab the move tool, exaggerate the size, and also change the form a bit more. So it's all up, you know. It's, a, it's all up to me, I guess, and, and uh, how I want this guy to be shaped. Right. 
because right now I'm still blocking some of the areas. Uh, see, in order, you notice I, I also penciled out uh, an ear. Um, and if I want to make an ear, I can just um, very easy, very very easy. Um, you could technically you could um, take this and mask it out. <coughs> And then just uh, flip the mask up again, so that way you can sort of uh, get this shape. Flip the mask. You grab the move tool. Make it big, nice and large, right? And then, uh, of course, this is, I should have masked that out. But I'm gonna leave it. I like. I don't. I don't mind that shape. Actually, that's I'm creating. Right. And at some point, I'm gonna have to add more um, detail. Right. So I'm gonna switch to this. This. Uh, I guess a sculptress tool again, and start to sort of uh, make this a little bit more dynamic right I'm gonna increase it a little bit right. and then sub sub it so that way it can go the other way right and then get out of this section right so now um I'm already going into 22 minutes, so I'm going to stop this in, in the next five minutes. But uh, the whole point, purpose of this is to get used to the idea of blocking out your shapes, right? So obviously the 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 the, 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 the chin looks sort of weird now. So I'm going to basically uh, strengthen that. Right. That looks a little bit better from, to me anyways. Uh, and uh, I'm going to sort of over exaggerate some of these features. I'm going to grab uh, clay buildup. Okay, but I want to use, um, use a lazy mouse. And um, quickly, I'm going to take my move tool. Right? I want to make it a little bit more menacing. Right? And so. There's so many things we can do at this point, um, still in the um, drawing board, but um, I'm going to use the clay, it's right here, clay polish, you can see right here, clay polish, and you just click it, and look what it did, right? it's kind of polished it up for me, and it just, um, I'm going to show you that it, it creates it creates a mask, so I'm going to have to deselect the mask uh, first. If you, there we go. Deselect the mask, and so now it makes it a little bit more polished, right? Uh, I do have um, this guy turned on, though, so I'm going to have to not use this guy, the, the Sculptus Pro, right? Right, so it got rid of some of the details that I had before, especially in the lips. 
Well, that's okay because it's only. Oh, I do have the fuse costers. I turn it off. Uh, yeah, I'm only I'm only uh, playing around right now and see if I can actually make something look more dynamic, right? I kind of kept it there, there barely, but uh, but again, you know, this this is sort of like a, a design stage where I would sort of uh, throw some things together and, and, and see what works, and then build up on that, build up on the model, right? So, all right, so let's um, let's talk about um, the matte painting portion of the class. We are going to be using ZBrush, uh, but not today. What we're going to be doing today is um, let me just open up uh, Photoshop, right? So we're going to work uh, uh, and design our own sort of imagery, our, our own set, right? And uh, I'm going to use a uh, film and video, and I'm going to make sure that my background is not transparent. So advanced uh, options. And uh, let's see if this is, this is happening here. Oops. Uh, maybe, the, yeah. Um, actually, they got rid of it on this version. This is the latest version of Photoshop. Um, but I'm hoping that when I hit uh, create, it won't be all a grid perfect, right? That's what we wanted. So. Um, I'm going to turn off the guides, um, not extra, where is it? It's so funny, I'm, I'm so used to doing this with shortcuts, that, um, but now I can't remember what the heck it is, um, the guides, oh, there we go. Oh, I just going to snap too. Oh, this is interesting. I forgot that uh, that dial does that. Okay, cool. Uh, so once I get rid of the guides, it should be. Do I have that keyboard? <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that little keyboard. All right, so I have my keyboard now. It's a tiny, tiny, small keyboard that it's made for tablets. Um, so I'm gonna use a. Uh, the control, I believe, control semicolon, and there it is. And then I'm going to use control zero to make this a little bit more full screen, right? So now, uh, the reason the reason why um, we're going this way is because we, we want to make a couple layers, right, right here. Um, layer, I guess, layer one, right? Uh, we want to uh, sort of design a backdrop, right? But not only any, any backdrop, uh, backdrop, any or background. Uh, it has to be sort of um, a combination of other uh, of elements to give the impression that this is a sci-fi background or a fantasy uh, background, right? So let me show you what I mean. So uh, I am going to go to the internet. And already I started looking at some pictures that could serve as sort of um, a back background, right? So what I normally do is I try to do this all in perspective. If you look at this uh, mountain picture for a second, you will see that uh, there's a lot of depth into this first image, right? If you look at... Um, if you look at, um, let me see, uh, yeah, I think all of them have a lot of depth, so any, any, any one of these would, would work. I would use something like this uh, to make sort of a, a scenery that has quite a lot of depth, right? Now, you can make it up as you go, uh, sketch it, right? And basically, you're going to be taking photographs at some point and start to color correct and add all kinds of elements within just Photoshop to make it look like uh, it, it's it's all one scene. Uh, it's almost like you grab your camera, you took off to another planet, 
you photograph some environment that obviously doesn't exist here in, um, in the earth and um, you, you, you use your, your ability to make it look photorealistic right so that's that's one thing that we have to sort of keep in mind uh, another another element that's very necessary is light source the light source right so when we look at this picture the first one here I don't know if um, we can zoom in eh, that's I guess as good enough as gonna get right Wow <laughs> okay never mind um, there is a light source and you can actually see um, around the trees where the light source is uh, it looks like it's um, high noon because everything's underneath all the shadows are underneath the trees it's hard to see uh on, on this window but let me uh download this guy all right so uh -huh, i'm gonna log in and um yeah two minutes and i'm gonna go back to same folder I was before, which was landscapes. And then I picked, uh, I think it was uh, this one here, the, 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 the mountains here. Oh, even better. Some of these are, are, are actually even better. Right? Uh, but they, they serve as a good uh, template to sort of start from, right? Start at, right? So. Um, let's let's pick a theme for example um, if we're doing a sci-fi scenery but yet it's still you know you want to include a lot of greenery like hills mountains and combine it with um, with a lot of uh, sci-fi elements well let's let's start with that idea right so we have to make some sort of uh, backdrop that would look like exciting uh that'll captivate uh all the elements uh of sci-fi but yet still you're keeping the organics by showing greenery right uh, but not only that the lighting right you have to keep in mind where the lighting is coming from because the first thing what you do is you establish where the light source is in this case the sun or the sky or both of them and you're gonna you're gonna be pretty much um you're not give you pretty much uh, uh, you know once you establish that then you have the source to make all your other layers that you're going to introduce and match the lighting right so let's begin so let's say pick something real quick um hmm. maybe something like this Right. So let me go to Photoshop now and um, sorry, look at this one once more. So let's say something like that or like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be the same. We're not actually just taking a picture. We're going to manipulate the picture. We're not. We're going to manipulate and change it to look like uh, it's our own world, right? So let's begin with um, sort of a. a line of perspective so with photoshop uh, i believe there's ways to do a, a straight line uh you could i think you, 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 you could um do this better I, I know yeah it's very intensive when it comes using the um, the mouse uh, and a keyboard, but I'm gonna make this a lot easier. So I'm gonna pause this for one sec. Okay, guys. So uh, what I just did is I um, I customized some of the shortcuts on my uh, you know my buttons on the, on the tablet, as well for the Pro Pen 2. I modify some of these things so that buttons are like this one here is using uh, the Shift key now. Right click. And the eraser is no longer an eraser but it's uh, a control so it makes it easier for me and i think for a lot of you guys all as well you can actually modify your stuff we can act i can actually show you in person 
But the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab the brush tool and bring the size to about maybe, I don't know, let's make it a, let's make it all five, right? There. And then I'm going to design on layer one right here, right? We are going to design all the shift key and draw somewhat uh, a straight line. This will be our horizontal line, right? That means that if there's a sun, sun's gonna be, you know, here and up, right? Right, so it all depends on what we want to design, right? So I'm gonna just go to the history brush and delete the sun for now. But, uh, this, so I'm gonna do, do a little bit of perspective. Uh, so this point right here, and uh, I'm going to connect some lines that's pretty it works that way okay so ah uh, I see what it's done okay. Uh, I'm gonna increase my brush just a tad bit more. Maybe nine. There we go. And uh, another line right here. So this is gonna be another line, right? And then right here. Right. And then right here. So I usually make three or four of these, top and bottom, right? And uh, that gives you sort of a, a way of to, to sort of align things in perspective, right? So now this will be called, of course, uh, guides, right? So that's going to be the name of this layer. So right click. I'm just going to type it here. Call it guides. And then uh, we're going to make another layer. So between, you know, we can even uh, lock the guides, right? So the guides can be locked. That's not the way we want to do. So the way to lock it, I believe, if you right click it, I think it is. I should be able to lock it. Oh, right. Has it been so long that I haven't locked a layer in Photoshop? Oh my god. You don't have to lo unlock them. I mean, oh wait a minute, it, it, it's right here. Right? So, lock the layer and uh, now you can look at that. So now we're going to start to make sort of um, mountains, right? So I'm going to make some sort of mountains. In fact, I'm going to look for another one because uh, there's so many. We want to pick maybe this, the green mountains. Yeah, I think some of these ones are a lot better because it has a lot of depth, especially with the first one here, right? Because I do like the, 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 the roads and the trees and the hill and mountains, and they're so ginormous. Uh, it captivates so much depth, when, especially when you look at it in, in a 3D view, right? So back to photoshop and so we want to create start with the roads first right so we make the road almost to nothing as it hits it hits the horizon right uh, the next thing we're gonna do uh, we're going to go ahead and um, start adding some uh, elements to make this more more um, ginormous, right? But, but we're going to we're going to add some elements that you won't normally see in Earth, right? So we will keep the rocks with the mountains, right?
Right, and then of course we'll make another mountain here. And then another one. Right. Right, so throw another mountain in the distance and then even more so. Right. So this road uh, it's kind of what's taking us right to the middle of the page, right? That'll be very important because um, this map painting has to tell a story, right? But now I'm going to start making it into sort of sci-fi, right? Uh, there's many things that we can incorporate. We can add now technology. Um, we can also apply floating rocks. Right? Another floating rock here. Right, so I'm using the perspective uh, based on these uh, guides that I do. So I'm going to keep two of these. Uh, I'm going to then bring the opacity down from my guides so they don't really compete. Right? I think I'm going to lower it down too much. Okay, so maybe like that. But uh, but the fact is, um, you want to start to sort of uh, use layers to sort of design the, um, your um, imagery, right? So now maybe I could do other things I started to the layers I don't want and start zooming in to some some of these areas and start to sort of add structures that are somewhat sci-fi right so now when you look at sci-fi stuff I mean you know it's the uh, buildings are they have more of a unique sort of a shape right um, and there's ways to design uh, uh, photos into actual buildings that, that can actually follow these uh, shapes, right? Actually, I'm going to make it more like in the, pers in, in the perspective, right? Right, so maybe we can actually design some kind of cool bridge that goes from rock to rock, right? Now, if you're not a person that can draw, you don't have to worry too much. Right now, I'm just trying to fill and block out the areas, right? Because this is going to be all like rocks, right? Um, and the, the, the fact is, it's going to change a lot uh, as we go on with the process, right? But the, the fact is, I mean, even these, ha these buildings look kind of crappy right now. But I'm not worried about it because I know the minute I start to actually use real imagery and warp it to make it look more futuristic, it'll definitely change the dynamics of this whole picture, right? So. And perhaps, um, you know, it looks like there are two cities, maybe. Two cities, 
and then here is sort of um, a, a road, right? Again, it, it does help to zoom in. Uh, if you don't like something, you can always delete it. So as you can see, I do a lot of this, right? I, I, I erase stuff that I don't like, and then when, once it comes to me, then I, I start to redesign it right, real quick, though, right? It doesn't have to be something that uh, you're committed to right from the start. You can always change your mind. So usually I, I place um, you know some some sort of um, structure at first. And then I have a second look and I go ahead and maybe race it or, or warp it or do something just to make it look more unique and interesting, right? Obviously this you know would work, especially with. Um, with Maya, right? You can actually build some of these stuff in Maya. Um, uh, and then you can actually project imagery on top, right? The whole purpose of uh, map painting is that you're gonna actually create something unique um, that, w that, y that you would see in a sci-fi film, right? I'm gonna th I think I'm gonna stick with sci-fi because we are working on, you know, um, yell stuff i don't know if that's gonna you're gonna end up doing something sci-fi ish but i know also meals it's good gonna benefit from that as well right um so here we go yeah it's pretty loud in here because um well we i have the ac on right ac yeah sorry the heater <laughs> right it's uh it's cold upstairs so, and I'm not actually at home, I'm actually at work still. So, um, as you know, tomorrow I have that that uh, doctor's appointment, so uh, this is the reason why I'm not seeing you till, till next Wednesday, not, not, well, if you're looking at it Wednesday, it'll be the following Wednesday, right? So, uh, so I'm doodling. But again, just to give myself uh, an idea uh, as a structure, right? So now I'm going to use uh, other mountains as well, right? And over here too, right? And then here uh, we're going to have clouds, right? Clouds. You don't have, you don't have to uh, draw them precise and I can actually uh, uh, the sun here right add other, other stuff that we can use um, like like trees right or rocks um, or if it's more like a desert -y kind of environment right right so so something that will lend itself to look gorgeous uh, in, in the sense of uh, matte painting, right? So I'm just gonna... So, for homework assignment, I want you guys to design something like this. Right? But, but I want it to be your own sort of uh, take. The hardest, the hardest uh, thing that I find anyways uh, when you get, when you start working on map paintings, is capturing the depth, right? So the reason why I started with the road first is because if I sort of uh, m uh, match sort of that snake look going into the distance, I'm giving myself some idea of how to fill it 
for the mountains, right? So if you look at the picture, right, you see the same thing here. The mountains get bigger, actually. Mines actually don't get bigger, they get smaller. But, uh, but it, it helps, though, to look at references, right? Don't try to jump and do second guessing. Uh, look at pictures, right? And these pictures, uh, we're going to actually collect them for, for next week's class. And we're going to start to adjust them, uh, color correct, and start to build it up in layers. Uh, so that way we can bring it into other After Effects. Yes, I said After Effects. Or Nuke. So we all have those two choices. Uh, but I do want this to be... Uh, projected right into geometry just like the last assignment uh, <clears throat> the difference with this is that the camera that we're going to be using it's not going to be a predetermined camera from a background uh, footage we're making up the whole scene this time we could even use water uh, in in there we can actually put uh, a body of water with animator already uh, from the footage right and make it look like it's part of our matte painting right <clears throat> there's so many things uh but uh, the, the the i guess for now <clears throat> this is sort of the starting blocks right uh designing uh, your map painting now i'm gonna I'm, when i mark this i'm gonna be looking for uh, <clears throat> something that has a lot of depth uh, right so you see where i, I drew on uh, just uh go my guides for a second and turned it off for a minute. I drew the guides around this part of the page. I didn't. I, didn't, I mean, I, I didn't want to put it too low. I didn't want to put it here, right? Uh, because I'm not giving myself enough room for any action to happen down at the bottom, right? I place it actually right here into this area, right? So um, let me just uh, delete some of this stuff, right? Okay, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, and so it's important because um, I, I usually use it around here. I mean, you can even go a bit higher, right? And put that as the horizon line and the mountains in here, right? So I'll leave that up to you, right? Uh, but as long as it tells a story, you get a sense that it's sci-fi, right? Uh, you should be able to look at this and see what happened before and what may happen next that's sort of your goal and remember I, I said it before but i'll say it one more time the light source right this is the main light source sun in the sky right you're going to get a lot of blues in the dark areas and a lot of yellows and gold colors in where the, the direction of lighting coming from the sun right and so that's it right so uh <clears throat> so i'll leave it like that and uh, i'll see you guys next week and um my apologies i didn't have a chance to um this is for dina by the way uh, i didn't get a chance to convert it into a closed caption just because I, i'm doing it the night before but i'm gonna um, submit it for ca a closed caption and so maybe if you wait uh till thursday then um you know you can actually check this out properly right so uh and look at the read the closed caption all right so that's it guys i'll see you guys next week